just here with Michael Murphy from Turles Airsfields, um, the captain of the 1964 Tipperary team. Um, I suppose the first question, Mick, just um, when did you find out or how did you find out that you were going to be the captain of the Tipperary team? Well, it was uh, regular within the club that any man from the South Sea's club, like Tony Wallace, 58, and Jimmy Doyle was 62. Uh, Sean McLaughlin was 63, he was unlucky not to win. Myself, 64, and Jimmy died, 65. We got it in rotation if we happened to be on the team. Okay. That's how it happened. And it happened above the meeting one night. I was top secretary and there was a thing happened and I didn't want to be involved at, at the meeting. Okay. But yeah, it came up and I was nominated and seconded and that's how, we, how I became captain in 64. Came a shot and some reporter rang asking me all about the team, the strong points in the team, and we finished up anyway. Oh, yeah, he said to me, What about the full line in the back? She said, I'm um, a bit old now. He was referring to John Dye, Mikey Marr, Kieran Carey, because he did say that they'd be brought out in wheelchairs to treat him. And, uh, and I said, I thought that was a very unfair remark, like you know. And as it transpired on the day, there were three distanchmen on the, on the day. So he finished up by asking me, he said, who do you think is the weakest pint on the team? I said, hey, you could be talking to him. <laughs> so right. that finished that conversation. Um, the abiding memories, of course, then would be, I was on Seamus Cleaver. Okay. And of course, the match wasn't on two seconds when Seamus scored a pint. And I was amazed by the put Seamus Cleaver up wing forward on the day. And Seamus Cleaver was known as the Prince of Halfbacks. Okay. And got hurled of the year and half back. But maybe they saw something, no disrespect to Michael Murphy, they probably said we'll put clear up on Murphy, he could be the weak part of the team. But I had no problem with Seamus after, like you know he scored a point after five, but that's all. Yeah. He wasn't yeah. in the game. Just looking back through the history books for somebody, myself, who's so young, who I'm absolutely sick to death yeah. of being beaten by Kilkenny. Oh, yeah. But it seems that from talking to older Kilkenny people, ye seem to have that hoodoo well, over them. Well, we had them. that hoodoo over them for nearly 10 years. Yeah. We could beat them any day of the week. Were you ever beaten by Kilkenny? Not in my time, but my time now was very short. I was I there from roughly 60, dropped and brought back. And no, not in my time. We were, we were beaten by Beantham Wembley one year. Okay. It was only an old uh, Whiz Weekend game. Okay. And at that time, you were trying out younger lads and giving them an old spin, like, you know. Yeah, yeah. But no, um, but now Kilkenny, you have to hand it to them, like, you know, I suppose they're the greatest team of all time. Absolutely. But they have to be, when you look at what their record there for the last 15 years, even go back that far. Yeah, yeah. We were in hard luck there last year, all right, we could have beaten them. And, or there or there about us, but they always seem to have the upper hand, so hopefully maybe a few more yeah. of my retire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just looking back at some of the older footage, Mick, um, just watching them parade across the field at the end of it, that must be a super memory, is it? Ash, it's fantastic on the day, like, you know, when you go up there and you say about your speech, and I, my speech was wonderful, I have to say. <laughs> with the help of the yeah. cashel man. Yeah, with the help of the cashel man, Sean of the years later. But uh, coming down and oh, I should the history of the history of the boys and they carry you across the pitch and into the dressing room and the reporters inside meeting you and then the thing like um, back to the hotel and um, meeting people, shaking hands with you, photographs, pictures, autographs, uh, a meal that evening in Barry's Hotel and the following morning then no such thing as going to bed because it was a set of rays going to a night. And up all night. Following morning then you had to go to um we went down to the palace barn. It was an Ina man, Bill Hearn, lovely gentleman. And I had the cook with me and I gave it to Bill Hearn. Now Bill I said, I'll give you I'll give him a hundred pounds he said at that time. Go away, he said, You don't want any money in here me. So he filled up the cup. There was fourteen holes in the cup. <laughs> in the, in the Lee McCarthy. There was 14 holes in the Lee McCarthy cup and there was more lads in under the cup than there was drinking out of it. 
and that's as true as I'm sitting here and brought the, co the cup back home here to town and people didn't know it at that time now, even the younger generation, they always thought that you met at the station and you brought to the square, but in our time you got off the train and onto a lorry and you were brought down to the steps of the cathedral and your team were on the steps and the bishop came out and met you there. Because in the photograph now they send that a lot of people are saying, why were you, was it raining, they said, on the night that we came home that you were in the uh, cathedral. No, that was the that was the thing at that time when you came home after the All Ireland, and down to the steps in the cathedral and the bishop met us all down there and that's how it happened. But people were under the impression that it was raining and but that's it. Then for a few weeks after that then you're you had to bring it down to Mick Roach's country and Matthew McKenna's country and every cost me a small fortune. Only Touring for my around with the cup. Huh? Touring around with the cup. Touring around with the cup. And that's the story. That's that's the the, the, the hype that's in it and, and it passes so quickly, it is fifty years ago now. Yeah, fifty uh, years. Yeah, you wonder where it's all gone. Yeah. Now when yeah. I tried it for the short time I was doing yeah. I suppose very unlucky with the injury, Mick. No, that was, head. We went to America to finish off a league fight. We won the league proper here, and uh, we beat Wexford. And a little story I told about that was we were staying in the Crofton Airport Hotel, and Paddy Lahey, and we were all sitting in the lobby. Now, well, as he says, early to bed tonight, now he says, very important match tomorrow. He says, the league final, and trip to the States at stake. So I'm putting all the drinking men now, he said, in charge of Ozzy. Ozzy Bennett is going to be put in charge of the drinking men. Sean McLaughlin, McBorns, Dean Devaney, Michael Murphy. I don't know who else. Larry Kiley wasn't into much drink, I think, at the time. And we were brought up into one big room and locked in. And Sean McLaughlin, the, 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 the elder statesman, Jesse he said, lads, I won't sleep a week, he said, if I don't get a pint. And we looked, opened up the window. Something like here, right? Like. And we got out of the window. We walked down the road, we had lovely blazers and shirts with the crest on it, into the pub. We drank four pints apiece. Came back up, and I was shoved up into the, the room because I was the youngest and the smallest at the time. And lo and behold, out the Crow Park, well, massive thing to follow in the morning, and out the Crow Park, and we cleared Wexford. We bet him by 24 pints. I know the people tell you, don't drink before a match. <laughs> no. We drank four pints apiece the night before that league final. We bet by 24 pints. Jimmy Doyle, John Doyle, I think even Eddie Kerr, they all reckon that the 64 team was the best Tipperary team they, ever. They, 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 you see it, I suppose. When you look at the talent that's in it, like, you know, yeah. on the full line of action. Tony Wall and Mick Burns and Ian and Theo and Mick Roach, Jimmy and Babs Keaton, Larry Dye and Linda Vanny, um, Mackie McKen and Donnie Neal and Sean McLaughlin. The Vanny was only a sub in 64. Okay. Okay. And he was brought on with 15 minutes to go and to give him a run to cough Larry Kiley. I can tell you the, the talent that was in yeah. it. Like, you know. And you, what, what did you win? You won the final by big, oh, big score. 5 to 2, 14. Yeah. Score, and you know. bet Cork, is that right, making a monster final in, in, in Limerick? Bet Cork in the monster final, Shall we bet him out the gap? And I went up to click the cup, they had no cup. They had no cup? No cup. <laughs> Everything happened to Murphy. Never right. Anything that, yeah, yeah. Murphy's law. <laughs> Murphy's law. And we went down to the hotel to have no meal. And this fellow walked up from the monster. Now Mickey said, this is for you. That was it, no more, no less. That was it? Yeah, handed to me. I was actually looking on the internet for pictures of oh. the months. I, I, I typed in the 1964 months no, of final. So that's why I could find no pictures. That's why you put that in, you know, there was no cup. There's no cup to collect. I forgot to bring it down to the fucking field. Imagine for the months of final. And the most important thing on the day, the cup. Yeah. And bring it down and leave it there. No, I do to collect the cup. Oh, sorry, I forgot to get the cup. Who would you say Mick was the best you ever hurled against? Well, for my own shot, too, you know, I, I went Kerry, I hurled on Kerry for a few times. Um, Jimmy O'Brien of Wexford, Pat Henshaw at Clare was good. Phil Wilson, Martin Ling, Dennis Eastley. Um, that would be about my, my, my side of it, like, you know. 
I see Jimmy Doyle put in the book he, he didn't mark you too often in training, did he? Was no, there a never, reason for that? Or? No, I never. We did that. We did mark one another over in training. But then, nothing serious. When we were training for the county team, Paddy Lang used to have a come over to me and he'd say, Mick, look, he said, I want you to hold on Nina. Nina. Can you hold him hard, he said. And I'd hold Neil in hard, like you know, because he was yeah. a real dandy, you look right good horror now. Yeah. And life. But any time I get near him, I give him an old dig and a dunt <laughs> and hold him hard. Time is after only lately there in the last couple of years that he's beginning to talk to me. Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> he must have had a last an impression. A high ball dropping in towards the goal now. Dennis sees to gone back for it. Doesn't go back that far. Eventually it does come back now to Tom Forrestal. Forrestal in towards the goal. And but his puck is locked down and comes out to Babs Keating, Babs Keating with a high dropping ball between Sean McLaughlin and Charles Whelan again and Donny Nealon has hit it, it's a goal! It's a goal again, Donny Nealon racing through once again, all eyes on Charles Whelan and Sean McLaughlin as the ball was dropping through once again, Donny Nealon racing for the dropping ball, getting it and quicker than you could say Donny Nealon, the ball was in the net, 5-12 for tip 2-8 for Kilkenny and it looks as if that 42 year old hoodoo still rests on the shoulders of the men from Kilkenny. The Toro Sarsi team in those years was a county team on its yeah, own. Yeah, yeah. You won it in 57, 58, 59, 61, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Yeah, yeah. So we finally stopped us in 60. Yeah. You had a right sing song on the way home oh, the day after sure. you were beaten, yeah, was we it? We had a few drinks in the, in the meal in, in Temple Moor and few drinks and we were on the bus on the way home, which we did, we sang the whole way home. Well, it was a short journey. But Tommy Barrett anyway, before we got out of the bus, he gave a rousing speech. He said, don't you blip, he said, we'll be back. And we did, we came back then in 61, to me well again, we beat him in 62, 63 and 64, 65, to be Cali in 65, and a replay in cash. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that was my shot to turn the road, like you know, and it, as I say, I won four minor championships and I won three county junior championships and I played county junior under Tio. Tio was our manager in fifty nine and we were beaten by a pint above in Torres by a good cock team. Yeah. Tio was our manager. I should have come playing there, so it was a camaraderie like and going up for training and the banter and the bit of crack like you know after and have a few old pints and go away playing matches then and come rather your own crowd coming home and maybe stopping the way home and forget to go home and yeah. have a few pints and a bit of a sing so all that. Yeah, yeah. And are you, are you still in touch with many of your own old no, teammates? I, I keep in touch with McLaughlin here, Benny Maher, Jimmy Dyle, um, Larry Kane, a good friend of mine, Mujer Maher. They're all good friends of mine and we still keep in touch like as yeah. much as we can. But they like everything. When you get married in life and Yeah. You're oh, were away. you married, Mick, when you were like, in, in sixty four, were you married in sixty four? No, 64? I wasn't married at that time, no. I'm sure you'd have had plenty of offers after it. Well, a few of them are can't tell on No. Um just Mick, how how do you think the game compares today compared oh, sure, to the compared ninety mile an hour now in comparison to our game? Uh our game, I'd say, was a tougher type of game, but today it is, it is a speed match in this game. Just, I think there's, there's a more skill in it, like, you know, it don't have to be for the speed of the ball and everything. It's a lighter ball now. Yeah, yeah. In our day, and if the ball, the ball got wet in our day, it was like a big soggy rag, like, you know, you wouldn't. Okay. I heard on him a Did you hold on him? At club level, and um, I hold on him when they opened up the pitch below and tipped town. John Tracy Park, is it? John Tracy Park, the opening of that. And, uh, I was playing centre back while well, I was in the Congo at the time. And uh, to tell you the respect that we had for ringing, but sure ringing you and me as well as could be from the south in the Glen. Yeah. And a little bit of a road broke out that day, but I'll never forget it. She is as I, I stood back, I was only 19 at the time. And he let her roar at me. What's wrong with you, Mickey? He says to me, not in source as I. <laughs> That's the respect that we had <laughs> yeah. for him at the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sword. Well, yeah. hey, he was, he was brilliant in the pale wrist on him, like a show. Yeah. Strong wrist and strong and brilliant brain, a great hurling brain, like, you know.
Three cheers for Kill Kenny. Hip hip! Hip hip! Hip hip! Just a little bit tongue tied after that very hectic game. Now being congratulated by Dr. Morris, the Archbishop of Cashel, and holding his cup, the cup of victory high. So the All-Ireland Hurling title has been won by 